So hi guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nadine McEwen, team lead of sales at Ram Logistics. And here with me today, I have Kerry Rampasad, who is business development lead at Heritage Petroleum. So Kerry, thank you so much for taking any time to do this interview with us. Can you tell me a bit about what you do at Heritage, your day to day? Well, Nadine, thanks, thanks for helping me on this. You're very welcome. Okay, so day to day at Heritage, business development leader. Actually, I moved to business development leader just five months ago, right? Okay. But business development in Heritage really is managing joint ventures, right. managing some of our operators that we have partnerships with. Right. And how do we get new value and new production for Heritage? So those are the areas that we look at in business development. So five months. So what were you doing before that? Before that, I was managing the, the land business unit, okay. which is basically onshore operations, right. production. Yeah. Okay. So we learned recently, right, that uh, for 2022, you guys did uh, 10 rigs. Ten, ten wells. Joined. Ten wells, yes. Ten wells onshore and one offshore. Correct. Can you tell us what does that mean for Trinidad and Tobago production? Okay, so that is mean. It's our contribution to Trinidad and Tobago's production. Right. But th that's like what you call the new oil, right? So we would go into a, a drilling program right. to get new oil out to the ground. And of course, the existing production, we try to optimize. And all this is contributing now to Trinidad and Tobago's basically total oil production, right. which means revenue generation. Correct, correct. But I think what more important that went into that drilling program is the subsurface work that brought us now to the candidates that we had for drilling. Right. So very important to our due diligence that was done it. Very exciting news and I'm happy that Heritage has been able, you know, to add that into the production for Trinidad and Tobago. So that was 2022, Kerry. What can we look out for Heritage in 2023? So as I mentioned, a lot of due diligence is going on from the subsurface part of the work. Right. And yes, we had a 10 onshore drilling program. Yeah. Now we're going to continue with that. Okay. Right. Well, I mean, we have a mandate to continue drilling onshore and we have four candidates basically will continue in the offshore as well. Okay. Now, I think that coupled with our operators who have a 37 well program wow. for the calendar year wow. will now be an accumulation of the production. Okay, so that's a lot of work. That's a lot. Of that work. is a lot of work, a lot of equipment, right. a lot of opportunity for, you know, young people who are involved in the industry and really getting production in Trinidad and Tobago back up. And I'm, I'm sure the government themselves are very excited yeah. that I also mean increasing revenue so we have a bigger budget next year, right? There's the downstream contract to support that enables all the activities exactly. as well. Exactly. And companies like Ramps Logistics, you know, a service yeah. provider. Yeah. So we're very excited for that. So tell me about some of your carbon reduction initiatives at Heritage. Okay, so, well, firstly, you know, we, we are much aligned with the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago yeah. in terms of 30% reduction in carbons by 2030. Correct. So this is one of our sustainability goals, and we are looking at it in terms of how do we reduce our biggest carbon producer, which is methane. Right. So, you know, last year we went into identification and quantification of what we produce onshore and offshore. And this year we're going into now how do we recover that vapor. Right. As well as identify and quantify what our partners, our operators also produce. Right. So now we have accumulated value and then we go into recovery. Recovery is like basically how do we get that that from being invented right. Right, to some sustainable use. Correct. Because I was going to tell you to bring that down for our listeners. Like, you know, that meeting, like, right. where exactly does that come from? And how do you intend? I mean, for the average person listening, you're like, okay, methane is a gas. How are you going to capture that? And when you capture it, what are you going to do with it? Right. Right. Yeah. So there are lots of uses, uh, you know, for methane. All right. So how do you capture it? When I, when I say vapor recovery, yeah. so it's probably being invented at this point, let's say from, from a tank emission. Right. So recovery it involves some infrastructure. Pipeline, compressor, knockout drum to take out if there's condensate and so on, and then get it back into some reusable form. Right. right? So this could be maybe compressed natural gas, it could right. be maybe LNG uh, bullet tanks or tanks. Right. Right. It could even be used now for in house for some of our EOR projects as well. Okay, good. So basically, those are some of the you know, usefulness of what is being invented. Yeah, to ensure that you continue in that whole process and you know it's not wasted and then when you put that back in that also it, yeah. it's beneficial from your bottom line you don't have to go 
and spend money on that ISO, but you can reuse it and probably even, you know, some byproducts and maybe there's even an opportunity to export it or to sell it to, to right. another, you know. So it's twofold, you know, we, we, we're reducing the, the carbon emission yeah. and may, maybe there's some opportunity for value add as well. Exactly, exactly, yeah. into another um, business line. That's right. So joining me now, we have Al Alexander, Communications Advisor at Heritage. Hi, Al. Thank you so much for joining me. Good morning and welcome to the Heritage booth. Thank you very much. Can you tell me a bit about your position and how long you've been at Heritage? Uh, I'm a newbie, right? I've oh. been here just about five months. Nice. Uh, yeah, so I joined in, in September, but this has been an exciting experience um, on the go from the very um, from the very first day. Right. And um, yeah, I'm learning a lot. That is That is very good. So we understand that Heritage has very key sustainability initiatives, right? Increasing food security, climate change, and also community development. Can yes. you tell me a bit of the, about those programs? Yeah, some exciting programs. So one of them is the Homey program, and I really love the acronym, right? Aye. Right, the Heritage Outreach to yeah. Maximize Environmental Excellence. Ah. And that Homey program focuses on the environment. Okay. Um, Trinidad and Tobago and the world is being impacted by the environment uh, significantly. Yes. And what we want to share with our fence line or, or operating communities, as we like to call them, yeah. is that every single individual can impact uh, the environment in a positive way. Very true. Right. So we are about to launch that program. We, it will be through the primary schools, right. secondary schools, nice. and, and communities. We also have the here we grow um, program, okay. which, which is a uh, more, more agricultural base. Right. And over the last two years, we've distributed over 20,000. Uh, that is fantastic. In the communities that, is that uh, the we service. Um, and we, of course, we that, that that particular program has three phases. Okay. So we have the seedling distribution. Which right. Is good. Yeah. And the second one, which you are very excited about, and you'll be launching Probably next week, week and a half, yeah. is the Agripreneurship Program. Okay. Right? Uh, we partnered with Y Farms. Right. Which is a, a, a local or a, a community businessman who is into ag agri. Yes. So we, we've supported, still supporting the, the community. Yes, yes. And we're offering scholarships to persons who are inclined to to increase their increase their agriculture and, and learn, more, learn more about it. And what the message that we want to get through that program is eat what you, you grow and you grow what you eat. Exactly. And exactly. Is, I am so excited to hear this. And these are very like important initiatives because I am, you said those things and two things stood out to me. One is uh, as a child in primary school, we always had the Captain Planet. Right. So when you spoke about like, you know, trying to reduce your, your climate change effect and everybody has a responsibility, you know, whether it is to stop littering and stuff. So it's very important that you get that down to your school kids. Right. And I was wondering right now, like I remember such a child singing Captain Planet is a hero. We're going to take uh, pollution uh, down to zero, correct, right? Correct, correct. And we don't have something like that right now to get the, you know, to get the primary school children involved. And that's really where it starts. And if they have that culture from there, they're able to grow with it. Well, I'm glad you're saying that, you know, because uh, the same gentleman with the wife farms. Yes. He's really a woman and a woman is a local uh, um, character. Right. That kids uh, know about. Uh, right. Are really hyped about it. Yeah. And so that's why we chose wife farms um, and, and Alpha Senon to be part of the program. Right. And so um, the, the reception thus far has been fantastic. And it sounds like to, to translate that from the primary school, the secondary school, and those persons post-secondary school who are looking for some sort of um, uh, to, to, to be an entrepreneur and, and right. get into agriculture. All right. Yeah. I myself, personally, I don't have a green thumb, but I mean, it's very important to understand. And, and some of these crops, they're very simple to grow. You get a seedling and, and within about maybe six to eight weeks, you, you have food. Depending That's on right. What it is, whether it is a pimento or, you know, something else. That's right. So it's very important for our school children whether it is primary or secondary get that into them and then when they go home with it and their parents see it it might actually trigger something that the parents had from when they were young fantastic and i also want to share something that we we do to celebrate our anniversary and it's right. called our day of volunteerism okay right and what we do um december 1st right or as close to december 1st yeah it's a find some community project yeah um to to work with the community and uh, so this year we decided to plant 
short term, medium term, and long term crops right. in communities throughout our area of operations. Okay, so that's in the Santa Flora area. Santa Flora, the Pinal, the Point Fort, the La. Right. You know, I mean, five different communities nice. we, worked, we worked in. But what's fantastic about that is yeah. that the communities now would take over the, the, the growing after you do the, the and, and and what i realize is that children get children get involved the yeah. parents get involved yes the elderly person all right community right. get involved right. so it's on real real um it, it it brings the community together no that's very that, that's fantastic and i'm so happy to hear you guys doing that maybe we had rounds so we need to reach out to you guys and we can do a joint initiative in the Kuna Bay area who knows you know awesome, so and, and, and you know you can take this to the other islands as well because our food security is really not for us but it's for the generations to come uh, well and, said. It, and, and it's very important to eat what we grow and grow up we eat, eat you yes. know so tell me a bit about some of the plans that you have for the next two to three years I um, mean if you have any new initiatives you're gonna add to what you already have if you have new things they're probably coming up well, what we want to do is to spread some of the programs that we have. Right. We have a Hero, Heroes Foundation, yes. which is a scholarship program for those um, primary school students who would have done well in the SA okay. and are going on to uh, secondary school. Right. It's $100,000 for students. That is but fantastic. But given in tranches as okay. they progress. But of course, the kids yeah. would be important Correct. for them to Correct. continue to qualify. Correct. So that is something that we're very proud of and is something that we're keeping. We also have the HIT program. I, hit. And trust me, it will be a hit. You say HIT and I'm thinking a workout. So tell me if it's Right, right. <laughs> so it, it's, it's not high in intensity, but it is yeah. heritage, information, tr um, technology training. Ah, right? That is very important. Exactly. Oh. And the, 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 the purpose of it is really to, to bridge that technolo technological divide right. um, between which is some of the big um, communities that we have. Right. Right. Yeah. Some of them are kind of challenged. Yeah. And we realize that this is a program and you can bring to them uh, that would allow them to feel more comfortable using the technology. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. These are very, very fantastic initiatives. Uh, and I mean, I really am excited and thankful to hear that, you know, Heritage has taken these approach and getting into the communities and really doing the work and helping the people who need it the most. So thank you so very much for that. I wish you guys all the best with all your future endeavors. And we're looking forward to working with you guys on some of those initiatives. Pleasure. Thank, thank you so you. much. So yes, Gary. So can you just reiterate for us what we can expect from Heritage over the next two years? Like what big projects can we really look out for and the names that we should, you know, pay attention to in the news? Okay. So what I can say is that for the next year, for the upcoming, this fiscal year and this year, yeah. year, you know, you have to, we're going to continue our drilling program onshore and offshore. So that's something to look forward to yeah. as well. We're going to work with our partners to also continue their, their drilling program. So that's, that's a new oil aspect. In terms of the oil oil, we're going to continue optimization. Right. We're going to continue with enhanced oil recovery, which is basically trying to get increased production as well from yeah. some form of secondary measure. And we want to do this in a safe and efficient manner. Correct. So we will be looking for, you know, usual contract support. We'll yes. also be looking for resources to help us because we may need to ship around some priorities. Yeah. Priority. Yeah. So yeah. we have to do that in that manner to really meet our targets for the next year. Correct. Thank you so very much, Carrie, okay. for taking any time. Right. I appreciate you. Thank you. And stay tuned, guys, for our next episode.